Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and this is Tuesday. It's August 6th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and we actually had some volume today. It started out with a really strong downtrend here. Um, this was a fairly easy trend line to find. You get it off the first two swings. It came into play multiple times. We finally broke it here. We had a couple legs down to a new low, and then we reversed. We were going higher. And then now we've just kind of gotten stuck in this little tight range right here. We failed, uh, really, I wouldn't say the range probably formed to here, and we failed out the top. Looks like we're trying to fail out the bottom now. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It's, it's too late in the day to be trading anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's 3 o'clock. We've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, no need to, no reason to ever enter a trade this late in the day because you may just end up being stuck in those little overlap right there in that little congestion area that's formed just below this strong support here so you got to be careful of that but anyway let's talk about the trades and what I saw uh, it was really straightforward today it might have been a little tricky in here because we got the break up here and we got that strong leg down but when you get that strong of a trend down um, you're usually gonna get a break and then two legs and a lot of times they're a measured leg but this leg wasn't quite as strong as this one right here this was a really good move right here um, so and, and you had to be expecting a new low here because this was the first break of a fairly strong trend line coming down and uh, uh, again there was some volume today so it was a really good trading day and um, but let's just go back and talk about the trades and we'll go from there uh, the market opened right in here but this is a good example of um, you know what you're looking for and it did kind of look like a trading range somewhat although this is a little lower low here um, so this might have thrown you off here uh, but I got this trend channel by drawing it off the lows I had it a little steeper originally uh, but generally you get it off these lows and I drew it there and originally I had it a little bit steeper and that may still be correct but I went and change it a little bit and you see it still gets you to the same place when you drag it up uh, you get your your break at the same place and uh, that might actually be right so let's just change it um, you know but I usually will adjust my trend lines as the day goes on if it looks like something's changing so that could be it right there but either way if you that's why I originally had it and that fits perfect right there for a two-legged correction uh, two legs back to a trend line and um, and the EMA, the EMA is there as well. But you know, I'll have somebody say, "Well, you didn't have that trend line there uh, because you didn't have a swing there yet." But I got it off this low side. Look how I did that. I drug that down and I copied it, and I drug it to the highs. And look how it fits, perfect. And so you can get those trend lines in advance if you know what you're doing and you know how to do it. Um, but it never fails. I'll get somebody to say, "Hey, you couldn't have had a trend line there," but yes, I did. And sometimes you have them there. Uh, you know long in advance and if you just drew it off these first two um, you know you could have had it as early as 7 seven fifteen, and this didn't get up here till 835 over an hour so I had that I could have had that trend line there over an hour uh, and when it bounced right here at the same place again then you know there's some validity to that line and, and you're probably you know the market moves and there's market geometry it moves in equal moves and if you look it went one tick lower here and it went one tick higher here on the upside so um, you know it's a perfect measured move basically on what I would call a measured move and you see the market did fell on that break lower and now it's trying to go higher again um, and that's the way the market does in ranges that's why we got to be careful trading those things but anyway that was the first entry I saw um, there was really a, a trade here too that I forgot to mark uh, and this was my favorite one really and I'll explain that here in a second um, let me back out a little bit um, this is a failed second entry long notice you got your new high the market is making is going up so you got a new swing high there first entry long pull back second entry long it fails it turns down that's a great place to go short because you got a long trap because some people thought it was it looks kind of like a range there and some people were looking for a range and uh, they got trapped long 
and if you got trap long there, you know, you never know, you know, that these traps will trap really good traders. That's the idea for, behind them is to fool people and get a lot of people in the wrong side of the market because they're struggling to take it lower. So if you do find yourself trapped, uh, you would have gone long right here. Or you might have even used the limit order when it broke higher, dropped it in there. But if you find it goes out the other side, as soon as you know it's a trap, exit or just or just reverse. If you reverse, you only lose a tick or two, and look what you could have made back. You get it all back plus some. Um, but the very least, you usually get back to scratch or, or end up making a tick or two. So you got to be careful reversing because you know there's often times that you'll get a failed second entry. It fails the other way too, and then it's a double trap, and they really got people fooled. And uh, but usually when you see that, it ends up doing like this right here. There's some of that going on right here. You notice this. Um, you got a first entry. Here's a new low. First entry short. Pull back. Second entry short. It fails, but then there's a failed second entry high, long, and then it turns back down again, and then it goes back. You know, just you got to be careful in that stuff because this is where you'll get trapped. And get hung on both sides. The only way to trade this is to fade the breakouts or buy little bitty bars down here at the low, like above that one, or below one at the top. And I don't see any up here. Here's one you could have gone short, you could have gone long. Uh, you might can get a chance to go short here again, but it's too late in the day. But that's that's the only way to trade that. So, but anyway, that's a failed second entry short. And let me show you. This was a second entry short. Here's your new low. Look at the market moving down, and look, there's one too. There's a big move down. That's a this low is lower than that swing low, so the count zero, pull back first entry, pull back second entry short. So there's one right there, but that was before I was trading this morning. Uh, I'll go ahead and mark it because it's still a good um, a good entry. It's a second entry short, two legged pullback, and with the leg that strong. You know you should get a little correction and probably another leg down. That's usually going to be equal to that. But then you get two legs back. There's your new low. This lows are lower than that one. Pull back first entry short. Pull back second entry short. It triggered right there. This is one where you'd want to use a limit order because that's a very bullish bar. Either wait on this bar, and that would have put you in right here anyway. Uh, but I liked you know dropping a limit order and it came back and filled it and. Um, and then you get a, you really get a second entry short right here, counting off this high. And this fools people too because what it is 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 a second entry is just like a second leg. And so you got a new high right here, so a first entry, and then a second entry. So there's multiple ways to look for those two legs. And uh, the most important one is with the trend, what, looking for two-legged pullbacks to the EMA, like this one, like this one, uh, like this one. And this is not one, uh, but anyway, we'll we'll look at this on the way down some more. Um, and really, this is a second entry short right here on a smaller chart. Notice the new low, the move up, the pull back, the second move up. So that's two legs back to the EMA. You don't see any breaks in here because there's not one. Uh, but if you looked at a little smaller chart, and somebody asked me about that today, this would be when I'm interested. And noticing these little two legs, you don't need to go to another chart to see that. You can see the low, the pull, the move up, the pull back right there, and then the second leg up. And this is also look at all those matching highs. A failed break higher, uh, great place to go short right there. It's right at the trend line. Uh, nice easy move down. Another little breakout pull back short here. Um, I didn't take that one. Probably should mark it because it is a good setup. Um, it's off the trend line as well. It would have worked, but notice that you got all those lows right there. A little failed break, lower pullback. So it's a breakout pullback short. I'll just draw the line so it makes it easier for some of you to see that aren't used to looking at this stuff. So yes, that's a breakout pullback short. I didn't take it because I already had was loaded up pretty good here, um, but it is a good trade. And then guess what? Then you got another move up, pull back. That, so that was another second entry short, but I was a little bit hesitant on that one. There's too much overlap there. I don't like that one. If you took it, it still worked. As long as you kept your stop above here, it was never triggered. So, um, you know, even if you took that one, but that's just not a very good setup. Uh, I didn't like it because by the time it 
uh, it triggered, you know, you really got just an up down bar there and you are outside the trend line. Uh, so, and it didn't go very far after this break lower. So I didn't like that one as much. But when you got the second entry short right there, you had to take that one. And uh, it, it, it was like a four tick failure almost. And it tries to go higher. So you might have gotten shaken out of that one. But when it turned back down there, uh, now you got a failed second entry long. Notice this new low. Pull back first entry long. Or you just start from the high. Pull back first entry long. Pull back second entry long. And so that's a trap, and so you go short right there, and look at that thing. They trapped a lot of people, and it just takes off. And you got a new low, first entry, but then you go to make a new low, and then it's this is really a first entry on this chart, but there's a little trap right there. It was like a failed second entry long because your new low, you got your first leg, you pull back your second leg, and it just turns down right at the EMA. I would have used the limit order here, dropped it in a tick or so. It would have gotten filled, and then it take it took it a little while, but it just keeps going down. And a really a real real aggressive trader probably would have went long here and here. Uh, I'm actually going to go back and circle those in green, just for and I'll explain that. Um, but you, you know these are aggressive entries and you're better off to stay away from them but there's some traders that will want to take those and they'll ask me about them so I'm gonna go ahead and mark them and I'll explain it to you here in just a second but we've had a trend line break uh, and you might have even considered that a break that's not much of a break and depending on how you drew your line uh, that could have easily been, you know, that's not much of a break. But by the time you get this and that big move down, and a little, that's like a little failed entry. It's a trap, and you see it would have been good for a scout back up. So, But it's an aggressive entry. But when you get this second leg down, um, especially with that little failed entry right there, um, that one probably ought to be copied. Uh, I probably ought to make that one green, too. Um, I usually wait on this failed second entry and try to take it there though so it's usually a lot better entry uh, but notice this is off the trend line too and then this failed second entry is off the end line, trend line this one is a little tricky here you had to uh, use a limit order here and notice the little trap down here it felt broke below all those matching lows but it's, it's really kind of a double bottom uh, but when this bar didn't break above I would have waited and used the limit order and if it would have broke above here I would have used the limit order too because that's not a very pretty bar and if you didn't use a limit order here this was, this could have been a four tick failure on you because it only got four ticks on a stop actually it only got three on a stop so uh, one two three four five no I'm, it, the limit order would have worked easily but a stop anything above there would have failed on you and I use a limit order there, and it did get filled. Um, and then, of course, you're always still looking for a, a retest of the high after the break. And it's scary going long right here, but you got to trust the rules. And this is another one. I would have used a limit order. <coughs> um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry. I would have used a limit order here. I did use a limit order. Um, or you could have waited for this bar and uh, put your stop right above it but it, you know the closer you can get in the better chance but there's plenty of room to get out before this high and you see it went and made a new high and there's your trend line rules showing you perfect there's a nice little trend little tight channel your break your move to a new high and then it started correcting again and uh, we've been kind of stuck in this range ever since um, but I like to short here too because you had your trend line break you got to move to a new high you got a failed uh, a double top which is a reversal type pattern after the trend line break in the new high uh, again I would have thought about a limit order here because of that doji try to get in high make sure you got enough room to get out before you get back to that EMA easy scalp and you could have got a lot more out of that one and then that was it for me for the day and we've just kind of it's slowed down and gotten kind of choppy and rangy again this afternoon but these are the kind of trends I mean look at all those entries down through there and none of them took any heat really and so if you just follow the rules and uh, stick to them uh, they're generally going to work and another thing here uh, let me show you this 
I mean, if you can find multiple reasons, so there's multiple reasons. This is like a little double top right across there, and you can see that one tick trap that ticked up there. Let me just move that out of the way. And then it turns back down. So they trapped people right there too. And there was a little gap. It, it pulled back just enough to fill that gap. You'll see that over and over. And notice that there's no overlap between those two bars. That's what I'm talking about. There's another little gap there. Um, and it didn't get filled till later. But when the market's gapping like that, that's a pretty strong trend. But generally they'll come back and try to fill those. They couldn't come back and get this one until later. But uh, they got that one fairly quickly. Um, so just watch for that but uh, you know anytime I get a news you know there's always people asking about the second entries and it's it's really simple there's no magic to it it's just it's real simple but people it's hard to put it into words to explain it but let me just show you again here you're moving down you got a new low you've also got a new high here so uh, but generally we're moving down here that's a very bearish move down so we're going to look for a possible another leg and we'll probably want to wait on the second entry so there's your new low and when I say new low it's not a new low for the day that doesn't matter it's a lower swing than that swing so it counts as a zero you pull back there's your first break lower that's a first entry you pull back again and your second break lower is right there and nice easy move down for an easy scalp and then now your count zero you're pulling back there's your little first break there's your first entry coming back up and then we break lower your second entry was when it broke below right there you have your stop order right there or in this case since that's a real bullish bar I would have waited for the break and then dropped a limit order right there at the bottom or maybe a tick back uh, sometimes on a strong trend you, you just got to go with a stop but in this case it didn't look like a strong trend yet this is just really the first pullback to the trend line and again if you're just coming in the trend line we got it from this line down here and copied it up so yeah we had it before prices ever got there so there's your second entry short and it looked like it was going to be a failure and they trapped everybody to the long side and so once you got everybody trapped here you know you got to take that one because now uh, you got little trap long traders thinking hey they outsmarted everybody and they really just got trapped uh, because they didn't see this line they don't know how to find these lines and they don't think you can do that uh, because I've had people post comments on the video saying hey you didn't have that line there because there's the first swing but I show you almost every day how to do it and you can't always find it in advance but 90 percent of the time you can and that helps you to figure out if it's not holding your prices tightly uh, then your lines probably not right and there really is like a midline on this and let me show you this and you can see that there's kind of a middle line down there so we're bouncing off and there's probably another one out here this is probably a measured move out too so uh, you know you can once you find the line it's easy to kind of slide it over and find the other spots but um, then we're coming down. You got a, uh, a new swing low here. Uh, you can't see it in here, but there's a first entry short, a pullback, and then a second entry short. And, uh, and then off it goes. And then there's a breakout pullback short that's kind of similar to exactly what happened over here. And it traps a lot of longs. They thought they were catching the bottom. Uh, and they're trying to catch bottoms. And guess what? They get trapped and boom, there it goes again. But you can see there was a lot of buying, but now you got a new low. It's zero again. Pulling back first entry, pulling back second entry. So a second entry short right there, and then there's that little trap, just like we've had the last few times, and boom, off it goes down. So if you didn't enter here on the second entry, you definitely wanted to enter here. And then it's coming down. First entry, you got a, uh, a count zero, a new low. First entry, and then it makes a new low, so zero again pull back first entry and then it's off to the races again there is no second entry there and uh, now we're moving up so each time we make a new high pull back first entry you're going higher new high pull back first entry there were no second entries there it's too tight a range and you couldn't get one uh, then you get a new long pull back and again just a first entry second entry 
uh, is way up here, but your counts your count zero here, so that's your first leg, pull back second leg, that trapped a bunch of longs, and then boom, there you go. And then you're moving down. Notice how that low is lower than that one. First entry long right there, pull back second entry long. You would have gotten trapped here, though, on both sides either way. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense to you. And you can actually have a count going off both directions but usually you don't want it you want to go with the trend so when you got a trend this strong just count from the lows the only time you'd want to switch is when you're getting a correction and start trending the other way because that's an uptrend now we're counting off the highs and so it's really that simple and and the whole gist of it is you're looking for two legs let me show you this you're coming down there's two legs of correction then another leg you're coming down two legs of correction then it starts moving lower again you're coming down two legs of correction and then you start you get two legs down and that's one leg pull back two legs then you get two legs up then two legs down two legs up and this is really close enough to be a two-legged correction back to the EMA here yeah we made one tick lower but that if you look at that does that look like a two legs back to the EMA yes that's close enough you could have taken that and almost considered it a second entry. So you won't do that very often, but it's there occasionally. And then and then you really get two legs down here. Notice this. There's one leg down, pull back, and then a second leg down. And that second leg actually has two legs in it. There's a move down, a pull back, and another move down. If you went to a smaller chart, you'd probably see one, two, one pull back two pull back three legs down right there and that's a lot of times what you'll see before you see a reversal three final pushes down it's hard to see in there but it's there so you got to learn to condition your eyes and your ability to see all this and you will with experience so anyway i'm 22 minutes into this today uh, a good trading day hopefully that makes sense on the second entries for some of you because you're over complicating them they're really very simple the idea behind them is two legs Two legs this way, two legs that way, two legs this way, two legs that way. If that, Hopefully that makes sense to you. But we're just looking for two legs, and the second entry is the second leg. So sometimes that simplifies it for people by telling them that. Otherwise, they've got all kind of crazy, strange ideas about, about what second entries are. And they, you can have them going in any direction because the market moves in both directions. But the, they work the best when you have a strong trend counting with the trend counting the zero each time you make a new low or counting the zero each time you make a new high and that's that's really when they when we're looking for them the most but I'm looking for them all the time so uh, because they help me know if if we haven't had two legs and it you know the entry suspect but anyway I'm gonna wrap it up I hope you had a good trading day best one we've had in a few days so it was nice to see some movement today and some volume look at all the bars today compared to say yesterday and uh, we had more bars by probably nine o'clock today than we had almost all day yesterday so uh, and when they get small like that somebody made a comment to me about how small they were but that's just because there's so much volume that's an indication of higher volume when you see a lot of little tiny bars that are just chopping but they keep going down or they keep chopping up that's really a strong trend and uh, it doesn't look that strong but it is uh, it's just because there's a lot of volume so remember that look at that EMA there's no doubt how look at this point straight down and there's been and everything's below the EMA that's indicative of a strong trend and we didn't get above it till right here really I mean, that's a long time to be below the EMA. That means the trend is strong. And it's the same thing if it stays above it that long. And look at it now. Right in here, it's on both sides. And look how kind of how flat it is. When you start seeing the EMA on or the price action on both sides of the EMA, beware. Because it will bite you. So that's a good time to stay out and just watch it. Or either you got to trade the range rules. And you can see if you bought the lows or sold the highs, it worked. And that was all you could do today, uh, or you could do in this range, I should say. And this is also a good example of showing you how the market can trend and then range. And really, this range does kind of stem back all the way over to here, now that I kind of look at it a little closer. You can see that, and we just failed out the top, out the bottom, 
out the bottom, out the top, out the bottom, and all you had to do was fade those. And so there's other reasons to enter both of those, both of these two trades. So um, hopefully you can see that. And you might have had this just a tad higher, like right there, and this one might have been just maybe a tad lower. And now look at that. You can see that range with a little failed break here, a failed break here, a failed break here, a failed break here, and a failed break here, and it was probably working on a failed break here. Uh, we traded up into this little range, uh, so the bias probably tells us that we're going to go out the other side. It doesn't have to be, but it's usually what happens. So, Okay, I got interrupted there just as I'm wrapping up, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for the day. I uh, hope you had a good trading day. We'll be back to do it tomorrow, again tomorrow. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.